Hey everyone! I wanted to share this really quick for those who are interested, and we are going to start the video by taking a look at a bunch of flies. Well, why are we looking at a bunch of flies, you might ask? We are doing that to showcase one of the many applications this kind of technique can have for the games you are developing. In my case, I wanted to create an interesting type of enemy. We can actually go and turn on the gizmos to see each of the predefined paths our flies are following. To recreate something like this, we need some way to create a path and turn it into movement. Let's take a look at a tool called LeanTween. LeanTween is a free scripting and animation framework made by Dented Pixel, and it comes with a great set of functionality. It enables us to animate objects in many different ways. There are many great features LeanTween offers us, but we are only going to use some of them. I found LeanTween when looking for a solution to animate objects along paths, and I was happy to find one that is not only free, but offered exactly what I was looking for. If we take a look at the description, we can see that it can be used to move objects along a spline or Brazier curve, and even the screenshots are telling us that curved paths are now within our grasp. However, it's not that simple. Taking a closer look at the examples provided by the developer, we can find different scenes giving us some insight in how movement along paths is established, but the scripts provided are coming with a downside. All examples come with a setup of different characters and their destined goals. In this case, we have a set of points and two characters moving along them. Running this, will give us the following result. This is just what we wanted to achieve, even if it's done in a very simplistic way, with only a small set of points. It shouldn't be difficult to expand on that, but we are running into some problems here. If we look at a script that is initializing our animation, we can find an array containing our points and our two characters. This already can be a problem if we are dealing with more than three waypoints, as it makes adding them individually a bit frustrating. It's also important to note here that we need to add one additional point at the beginning and one at the end, which is something I haven't yet figured out how to avoid. However, the issue with scalability gets worse when we take a look at the script itself. The script can help us understand how these paths are created by LeanTween, and is giving us a good start. The way these waypoints are handled just isn't very useful to us. Not only do we have to drag and drop each point into an array in the inspector, it expects us to write down every single one of them in the code. Instead, we want to let the code collect our points for us and create an array from it, without manual intervention. For this reason, I have already created a script that we can use and that allows us to create paths that are a bit more flexible. I also looked at the options LeanTween offers us and added some of them to our solution. We are now looking at the scene from the start of the video. Let's take a look at this really quick. You can see that it writes down the name of a game that got murdered by an unnamed company and it then proceeds with some magical effects that I just added for variety. Let's take a quick look at this while not going into detail too much. The scene will be included in the project and you can download the complete thing in the description below. We will create a small animation together soon. The scene consists of multiple particle game objects with particle effects, which are the ones that are moved along a calculated path. To create this path, we are using our script and several objects containing our waypoints. While the amount of waypoints might be confusing to look at, the creation and handling of them isn't so much of a problem. In general, if you want to support LeanTween, there's a path editor that you can buy that makes creating and handling paths much easier. This is just my solution to create paths with the free version. Our script has some options that we can use to modify our animation. First, we want to get our waypoints from a parent object that contains all our points in the order we want to use them in. We want to make sure that the waypoints get disabled on startup, and if we want we can reverse the path. Our parent will be this game object called path n. You can see that it contains a set of waypoints. 
If you want to change the order of the waypoints, we can just drag them around in the hierarchy. For debugging reasons, I have left the collected transforms and the path created from them public. So if we are running this again, we can see that it collects our transforms and turns them into positions. We can also tell our script to randomize our path, which is what I use to give the flies from the beginning a random variety while only creating a single path manually. And we also have different options to influence the behavior of our script. The starting time is used as a delay and the speed determines how fast the object will track our path. And the speed randomness is used to decrease the speed by a random amount. The loop type gives us the opportunity to repeat the animation and the ease type lets us influence how the object moves along the path. If we turn on gizmos again, we can also see the path that is generated for us. Each particle follows its own path, creating our scenery. Let's now take a look at the script to understand how it works. I will not go into specifics here, but let's go through this to understand what is different about this version compared to the version provided by the official examples. After our initial setup of variables, we want our script to collect our transforms. We are going to use parent transform get components in children to fetch a list of transforms. For some reason, this function also includes the parent object itself, so we are going to exclude the first element in this array from our path. This part of the script cares about creating an array of vectors and writes the positions from our transforms into it. Depending on the direction of our path, the array will be filled from either the top or the bottom. We then have a short section where we are randomizing every element in the path by adding a random amount to each position's x, y and z values. We can then safely turn off the parent containing our waypoints and start creating a tween. Visualize path will contain an LT spline created from our path, which is used to draw the path as a gizmo. Before we are starting to animate, we also set our game object's position to the first position in our array. This works in most cases, but for some objects it might be necessary to also move the object to the current starting position manually. After that we are creating our tween animation. With lean tween move spline we can create this from our object, the path and a time value. We are just going to use our speed value for that. After creating the object lean tween offers to add additional options. Set orient to path 2D was included by default. But we are also adding speed, ease type, loop type and a starting time. That's all there is actually. I will now create a small animation to round up this video. To create our path we are starting with one waypoint and we are going to duplicate it with ctrld. We can then move this point to our next location and then slowly build our path. If you want to animate along a specific path, like a font, you can use a reference picture to place the points above it. Once we created our path, we can now add our particle effect. The particle effects I have created for this project are only showing up when moved and only for a certain amount of time. If you plan on reusing them, make sure to check out their particle systems to learn the details. We are going to drag this in and set it to follow our newly created path. That's it. Easy enough. I hope you enjoyed this video. Download the project or just the script from the link in the description and leave a comment or like if you want to support my channel. See you around.